Now whenever we're working with GUIs, um, we work within groups and whenever, as you see, there's no groups or no GUIs loaded at the moment. Now what we first of all do, if we want to create a group, um, we right mouse click, add a GUI group, we we'll give that a name, we well, might call it um, demo, and then under that group, um, we then add all the GUI pages. Now the reason we work from groups is you might have a group for an iPad and we download that group of GUIs to an iPad. We may then create another group which is for iPhone, totally different resolution, different layout perhaps, and we can then download that group to the iPhone. There might be a husband's remote control, so you want to download a group to the husband's iPad or iPhone for example. Or you might have another group for the wives or the children, so they can all be different layouts, etc. That's why we work in groups, makes life a lot easier um, for downloading, etc. Now, once we've got a group created, let's go along now and we're going to design or create a new GUI page. So I might call this page, um, you know, TV Remote, for example. So it might be a page that we're going to create from scratch. Um, the TV remote. When I then open that up and edit it, we end up with a blank screen um, of a certain resolution when we open it. Now the first thing we need to do is hit on GUI, select what resolution we're going to have, the target resolution. In my example, I'm going to use iPad landscape. It'll automatically change that window now open to a size of an iPad resolution. But as you can see from default, the options we've got is iPad, Landscape Portrait, iPhone or iPod, um, Landscape Portrait, or we've got some custom commands, different resolutions that we've got. Now I can turn a grid on, so now we've got a grid showing, we can space the grid. So now when I add my um, buttons, for example, I can use the grid to help line those up. So what I'm going to do at the moment, I'll, let's just turn the grid off. So we'll hide the grid for a moment, go back to our blank screen. Now if I right mouse click on here, things that we can add to the page, we can add a button, so with the customer can hit, we can add a label, a web image, a slider or a new panel. Let's just go ahead and add a new button at the moment. We'll show you the hard way of doing it, or what I consider the hard way of doing it. Now when you have a button on a screen, it can be in the normal position, or the press position. So we then hit change, we go to where all my images are stored. On this example here, I've got all my images in the C, Program Files, NES, NTouch Genie Project Editor, Images. So let's add an image, for example, the Channel 7 logo. So I'm going to add 7 when it's normal. And what's it going to look like when I push that button, so I know that I've pressed it. Let's just have a blank button down here and we've got that's when it's pre uh, normal and that's when it's pressed. We hit OK and we've added the button on there. As you can see it's normal, it's pressed, you can see what happens when it closes. I can then move that button. As I said, that's what I consider the hard way of doing it. Let's look at an easier way of doing it. If I go down, go to my images folder with Internet um, Windows browser, move this across so we can get a bit more room to work. Now we can just drag and drop on there. Let's go channel 7 too. I can drag 7 and now and I, that's when it's, not, that's when it's um, not pressed. When I press it, I drag and drop, but before I drop it, I hold the shift key down. So pressing shift and drop it on top, we've now got the button when it's normal and when it's pressed. Let's go back and do another one. Let's do 7 mate. Drag it on there. Again, the shift key down and we can drag and drop it onto there. So now we've got three buttons onto the screen. We can line them up however we want. Even without the grid on, you'll see we've got some lines to help line it up. If I put that underneath, it then helps line up. Okay, now if I had a grid on, we can show the grid. It's now going to snap to grid. You see it's snapping to the top, right, top left hand corner. I can turn that snap off if I wanted to. 
so I can move it around a little bit more freer. But again, we'll turn the grid off. We might have some buttons there that what I want to do is I want to line up. So I can highlight them all, line them up perhaps with the channel 7, and I can now align them, align them by top, by bottom, left, right. I can now line them up by center as well. So let's line them up by center, and they're now all lined up. If I want to evenly space them, you notice there's a little bit more of a gap between there and there. I might want to space them evenly. Again, I can space evenly on the horizon, and it spaces them nice and even. If I highlight to a button, I can enlarge that button to whatever size I want. So we can um, do that and we can hit the Control V, um, Control Z to put it back as normal. So that's just giving you a little bit of an example of how we can move buttons around, um, add buttons either via the, um, you know, by the change, the normal and um, pressed, or I can drag and drop. And of course, if I drag and drop and open them, I still get exactly the same thing. So if I want to change that logo or change that image at any time, I can just click um, and um, change them. I'm going to hit cancel to get out of there. Now the other thing we may want to do, keeping in mind this is a TV remote, and it's just giving an example at the moment, is I might want to add a label. So let's go and add a label. And the label is, we might call it, um, turn my caps lock off, living room TV. Now I can change the font. If I go through here, it's got black, which isn't very good on a, um, there, let's make it silver. Let's change the font to a different size. We can change the, um, the style out if we wanted to, regular. Let's do that, and we can then move that around to wherever we want. I can get those, move them around to wherever I want, um, and you can see we're starting to build up a um, bit of a page here. I can change the background. I don't want a black background, so I can go change um, image, background image. I can change the color, or I can remove the image. At the moment we don't have an image, but let's put an image on there. So I can go to perhaps where my images are. Now you must make sure that the background image is of the same resolution as what the page is. On my example, I'm using um, iPad in landscape. So it's a 1024 by 768 resolution. I go down to where I've got some images of that size. Here's some here. If we use that, for example, yep, 1024 by 768. I can click on that and we see the background change. No, I may not like that um, one. I'll go and change that image again. Scroll down. And let's make it, um, you know, that background. And we've now got a different color background. So as you can see, you can change those background images um, and that to whatever you want to um, change them to. So that's just, as I said, giving a bit of an example of building a page up from scrap. So let's now have a look at working with some templates that a lot of the work has already been done. We're now going to have a look at importing a GUI group, one that we prepared earlier that we supply, and we'll have a look at one of the free groups that we um, supply. If I then click right mouse click, instead of adding a group, we're going to import a GUI group. I can navigate to where the GUI group is. Um, on this example, we'll import to here. Hit open, and this will import the GUI group with all the images um, and everything is laid out as we prepared earlier. Okay, once imported, you'll see them all appear on the left-hand side here. If I was to open that, you can see on this um, sample, we've got quite a few pages um, done. If, for example, we open our free-to-air TV, double-click or right mouse click and hit edit, we can see a layout here of the GUI group that's been um, designed previously down there. We can move the buttons around. If we wanted to move any of these buttons, we can move them around. Um, we can line them up um, however we want. We've got a picture up the top here. 
um, we can change. If you want to just change the background as we did before, change background image. We can navigate to where our images are. Um, see program files. We go down to Ness on my example, project editor, images. And as we did before, I can change the background image without affecting any of the else of the layout. And now we can see it's taking a whole new um, approach. If you wanted to add your company logo on there, um, you can add a logo on there um, quite easily. Again, I can go across, navigate to where my logo uh, images are, and that could be anything. If I just uh, quickly, let's pretend that this here was your logo. I can drag and dra drop um, that onto the um, page. We can have the same button with the shift. I go back to my, uh, bring it back onto the screen a little bit more. I can scale it down to whatever size that suits, place it wherever I want to on the screen, and that can be your company logo. I can remove the heading if we don't want to use the heading, and again, have that um, there. We can put a, same as we did before, a label, living room TV, change the font to whatever, whatever um, style, color, size, font that we want, and we've got the living room TV, etc. on there. Okay, so that just gives you a little bit of an example of um, you know what we can do. We're now going to have a look um, in a moment at assigning some IR or tasks onto the buttons.